The Q presents On the Ground. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are really excited to be on the ground at the Santa Clara Convention Center at the Anita Borg Women of Vision Awards, our second year, uh, and, and love to come back. It's a great event, 600 people really celebrating, some very special award recipients. Um, and we're excited to have our next guest, uh, Jody Mahoney, the Senior Vice President of Business Development for Anita Borg. Welcome. Thank you. So it's lovely to be here. Absolutely. So another great event. Um, what is this event really all about? Oh, I think this event is really about showcasing individual women, women who have really changed the face of technology. So you look at some of the people that have been honored, Susan Lambdell, Helen Greiner, for whom we can thank for the Roomba. I mean, the, the degree of technology and the women that are, have created technology, these are serious, hardcore technical women that have made huge contributions to the United States, globally, and I think it's so wonderful for me to have seen this history. When I think of the Anita Borg Institute for myself, what I think about the most are the extraordinary women that I have met. I mean, Mary Lou Jebson, who is brilliant. You just, you see them, you see the work that they've done, and you realize that they have kind of changed and altered the landscape of technology for all of us, and the Anita Borg Institute has brought them to a larger audience, so you, you, you see at the conclusion of the remarks and the end of the event, streams of students and people waiting in line to come up and ask questions and talk, and virtually every single woman that has been honored stays and answers until the last question is asked. And so it is both the transfer of knowledge, it is the honoring of women technologists, all of what Women of Vision is about. And that's just, that's the Women of Vision Awards. Then, of course, the showcase event for Anita Borg is the Grace Hopper Celebration of Women in Computing. Not only the best name in, in tech events, but certainly one of the most positive vibes of any show that we've covered, and we cover a lot of shows. And that thing just continues to grow by leaps and bounds. 15,000 people this year. So you look at that, and you look at the array of, of people that come to us now because what Hopper is, it's a platform for many kinds of organizations, for academic organizations, for industry organizations, to, to recruit, to present. And so the panels are just, you know, they're off the charts. And we have had so many requests for scholarships, and we get so many submissions for panels and workshops. And, and we only have three, three days of time, and every second is packed. And I think for many people, it's just, to walk into whatever venue it is and look around and face after face after face is a woman computer scientist, a woman software engineer, and all of the conversations in the corners and all the conversations around the panels and workshops is what it's all about. And, and then just the extraordinary role models. You look at someone like Manuela Veloso, who spoke last year and talks about this intersection of artificial intelligence and robotics. In that, I think what I love the most about the Anita Borg Institute is how it has informed my life. And so I've gone on and read as many articles as I can about this marriage of robotics and artificial intelligence. And so that's, so you're exposed to people like Maria Clave, you're exposed to all of these extraordinary speakers and role models in addition to all of these other people that you can ask questions to. And it's really amazing, we were at Grace Hopper last year, the, the access to these really big names. And they, they hang out and they walk around, and as you said, you've got, and then you've got this whole kind of college student um, Piece, which adds this kind of young, you know, kind of mm -hmm. younger vibe, younger energy, and the connection between the two is pretty magical. It really is, and you look at that, that, and that is magic is a wonderful term for it because you do you see someone here who's thirty or forty years into their career and is now you know a noted computer scientist that is doing remarkable things, and you see someone here, and I have seen conversations, I've witnessed this where someone will come in who's an undergraduate or a um, master's level student and say, mm, I don't know, I don't want to, and I've seen people convince them to stay in, and they've gone on, and I meet up with them in ABI partner companies. 
still have stayed in. They've gone on. They've gotten their master's degree. They're a doctor. They're computer scientists. They're working out for a particular company, and they'll come back and say, I met you at Grace Hopper. There's a panel right now going on of millennials, and there's a particular woman engineer who, from PayPal who came through Grace Hopper. So yeah. you, see, you see it, and that, it's that continuum that's so wonderful. The time keeps moving, right? So you guys have to continue to morph. You need to continue to evolve. You need to kind of, not, I don't want to say change with the times, but, mm -hmm. but to offer new things. Right. So as you look forward now, what are some of the new things Anita Borg Institute's working on? What are some of the new kind of programs, outreach, ways that you guys are kind of taking your influence out into the marketplace? Well, I think there's a couple of ways that we are doing it. The first is this notion of Grace Hopper, while it's a wonderful thing, and it is a, it's a once-a-year event, so what can you do to build local communities? And so we have a program called ABI Local. We've launched in a number of cities. We started with ABI New York. We've now launched in um, ABI Washington, D.C., ABI Austin, ABI Houston. We're launching uh, ABI London, ABI Tokyo. And these are smaller groups of of local women in computing or technical women that get together, they do local events, they, they do meetups, they do networking receptions. We just did a wonderful program in Harlem for women entrepreneurs. And that way, you've got now these local communities of women in computing, and you have almost an exchange. So you can develop content for those local areas, you can exchange it with content for Grace Hopper. So now you're not doing a once in a year, a once a year experience, you're doing a small local community and we're piloting them all over, international as well as domestic, in order to build these communities that will then be part of our larger community. Because if you look at what the Anita Borg Institute is about at its heart, it is about this community right. of women and Technical women, but you can only so. fit so many people in at the Grace Hopper. I mean, we're going to, you know, uh, we're we're already Houston. limited to the number of venues. Houston has nineteen thousand hotel rooms, so you know there aren't that many places we can go once we grow to twenty five thousand. And I could see that happening. So this notion of these smaller communities and what we have piloted, we call them GHC ones. So if you think of the TED and TEDx model, this is Grace Hopper and Grace Hopper One. Okay. These are one or one and a half day events. So we've got them planned for, we're doing one in Africa, we're doing one in London in June, we did one in New York, we're doing another one in New York, and these are based on the Grace Hopper. There's a call for participation or a hackathon or some technical event. They're, um, they pull people of that community together, and then hopefully there can be content exchange. So we get so many panels and workshops for Grace Hopper that we ca are not able to accept, and they're all brilliant, right. so we can bring them to the Grace Hopper One. So a lot of it is about taking this community and building it and making it stronger and and making it more global. The other thing that uh, Anna touched on um, when we were talking a few minutes ago is how now too the tech is expanding outside of just pure engineering exactly. and as, as other disciplines become more technology focused, whether it's marketing or sales and automation, you know, and of course then there's Internet of Things where technology is going to touch everything. How are you guys kind of adapting to kind of the expanding role of tech beyond kind of the classic, I guess, tech tech engineering type of roles? Well, we you, we have we have a program called the Top Company for Women Technologists, and so we actually have a definition of what we believe individual women technologists are. So the companies that come to us and the organizations that position themselves as as technical companies, we can say, okay, we need to see this is our definition for our particular work, and how does it work? How does it match your um, what your company looks like? And so I think that that's really important. It is it is expanding everywhere uh, because I am responsible for ABI's industry partners. Companies come to me all the time and say, we're a technology company now. We might be a railroad. We might be an insurance company, we might be a media company, but uh, someone was telling me a stat right now for an insurance company, they have a, a four or 5,000 developers because it's all being done through mobile now. Right, right. So, you know, I just, so for us, it's, I think it's easy because our definition of technical women, a, tech, tech, a woman technologist is pretty clear, and so now the companies and organizations can work within the framework of what we have, but it's broad enough. 
Well, Jody, you guys are doing great work, expanding your footprint, and a lot of opportunities still down the road. Great. Well, thank you so much. All right. It's been a pleasure to spend time with you. All right. Jody Mahoney, I'm Jeff Frick. We're at the Anita Borg Institute Women of Vision Awards. If you're watching theCUBE, thanks for watching.